Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Bamboo Lab Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Brian Bosley, and for the better part of the past 26 years, I've had the most distinct pleasure and honor of working alongside and coaching some of the world's top performers. And what we do here each episode is we simply bring their ideas, their, their challenges, their experience, and their wisdom directly to you. Do you ever feel like sometimes you're that hamster stuck on the hamster wheel of life and you're, you're spinning and you're spinning, but you're really not going anywhere or at least not going in the direction in which you'd like? If so, well, you've landed in the right spot. The Bamboo Lab podcast is written, created, and broadcast just for you, all you strivers, thrivers, and survivors out there. All right, a little update on our demographics. As of this morning, we are being followed avidly and growing on six continents, 31 countries, and 708 cities across this nation, up from 28, uh, up 28 st- cities just from, from 28, four hours ago. 28 new cities came on with avid followers and listeners. I'm going to read a heart letter today. It was kind of a, it was a great heart letter to hear, but at the, when I got it, I was like, oh man, that one, she's right. So this, this follower, this subscriber of the Bamboo Pack said, Brian, I've been loving your podcast. However, I would like to make a request. We'd love to see more successful women on your show. (laughs) Well, you were heard. Since that time, we brought on several very successful women, including the amazing guest we have today. And we have several more scheduled over the next two weeks. So thank you for your feedback. You were heard and we responded. All right. This episode is dedicated to my fancy cat, Kelly. You're the one who taught me to keep my elbows off the table during dinner to not spit food across the table when we're eating, and most importantly, don't pick food off the floor and eat it. So this one goes out to you. It's all for you. Let us dissect. All right. We have today an amazing, amazing guest. And I'm excited because this is a a part of life that I have got to learn. And in 50-some years on this planet, I'm still working on it. And uh, But we have Mariah Grumet today. Mariah is a certified etiquette trainer. Her mission is to bring an intentional sparkle back to a very lost art, which I can attest to that. Her method of teaching puts a modern twist on a timeless lessons of protocol, manners, and respect to help her clients create a stronger connection, distinguish themselves, and reach their full potential in their personal and professional lives. She is honored to work with individuals of all ages and backgrounds located across the world. Old Soul Etiquette Service includes private consulting, group sessions, webinars, speaking engagements, and special events on the following topics. Youth, social, dining, and business etiquette, personal branding, wedding preparation, style consulting, and much more. Mariah is a graduate of the University of Delaware with a bachelor's degree in fashion merchandising. She is certified to teach etiquette through Jacqueline Whitmore, founder of the Protocol School of Palm Beach, and a graduate of the English Manor and Beaumont's Etiquette Train the Trainer Grade 1 program. And she's also a strong member of the International Etiquette Trainer Trainer Society. Whoa, we need her. And she has an amazing following on Instagram. That's how we got connected. Kelly's an avid follower and fan of of Mariah. And she connected me with her and said, you got to get her on your podcast. So Mariah Grumet, welcome to the Bamboo Lab podcast. Brian, thank you so much for having me. I'm so thrilled to be here. Oh, so excited to have you. And I'm... I'm doing this really for selfish reasons, Mariah. So I just, I needed to talk to you anyway. So I thought, why not get her on and share it with the world? So now, you know, including myself, I don't know a lot about you personally, Mariah, other than what I've Mm -hmm. seen on, uh, I love your style on Instagram. It's, you you bring such a refreshing uh, new way of looking at, like you said, a lost art, like your bio says. And so it's so fun to watch. I, I've watched, you know, other, I, I have to admit it. I've watched, uh, I've watched, uh, uh, I forget the name of that, that show with, uh, oh, what is it called? He does Bruno. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, I forget. He's a comedian. He goes off. He's from Kazakhstan. <clears throat> uh, Oh, I can't think of his name. Anyway, we were watching that the other night, and he he, he disguises himself as a gentleman from Kazakhstan. He goes around the, the country, and he, he sat down with an etiquette specialist. <laughs> and she was really stoic and very coiffed and very boring and dull. And uh, all of a sudden, we see your your Instagram the same day, because we were sitting watching some of your posts and some of your, your, your reels, and I'm like, wow, that's the way to approach this subject. So... Tell us about yourself, Mariah. Who are you? Where you came from? Your childhood? Whatever you want to share. 
Well, first of all, thank you so much. That means so much to me. That's certainly the the goal that I have to make it approachable and and very much me. So thank you for recognizing that. That means so much to me. So just a little bit about my background unrelated to etiquette. I grew up in New Jersey. I was the, or I am the oldest of three children in a very, very close family. So I had the best upbringing, the best childhood. And uh, from, as you can tell from the the name of my, my business, I was an old soul from probably the time I could start speaking, maybe even before then. Um, and, and a lot of what I've been involved in growing up and the way that I've lived my life has been centered around the fact that I've always been ahead of my years. But as you mentioned in my bio, I started my career in the fashion industry. That's what my college degree is in. Um, I worked in the garment center of New York City, but then I ultimately ended up following my passion, which is where I got to where I am today. Wow, that's wonderful. Now, when you grew up, so... Th- old soul but it's very mm-hmm. unique for a person to really t- i mean that's a it's an art that you don't hear a lot of people talk about etiquette but it's so incredibly crucial to our personal and professional advancement in this world who was your inspiration mm-hmm. growing up you know i think that funny enough people will always assume that i grew up in this super you know formal household or i grew up participating in cotillions and actually being from new jersey that was not part of the culture. It's people automatically assume that I'm from the South and I'm not. I'm very much a, a proud New Jersey girl. And now I live in New York City. And and um, so people assume that. But I grew up in a, in a very loving and relaxed household. But we were sent, we were raised with the idea of treating everybody with kindness, whether that was the CEO of a company or the person cleaning the bathroom in the building. You treated them both equally. You treated everyone with respect and kindness and um, so that was really the root, at, at the root of how we were raised, which is really what etiquette is all about. So that's that's how you know doing the right thing and treating people with kindness. That's where my my love for this art really really started. But in terms of my greatest inspiration growing up and who I really looked to, I would say my dad. Really, he always told us when we were young that you could accomplish anything you put your mind to. He instilled that in us when we were very, very young and repeated it very often as we grew up. And he's actually a cancer survivor. And so when he was sick, he was sick when I was in my young, my preteen years, young teen years. And he actually then in that situation really showed us that you can accomplish anything you put your mind to. So he was my greatest inspiration in in all the chances that I've, that I've taken and, and things that I've done. And he continues to be my biggest cheerleader. So it's actually people expect for me to say my grandmother or someone that taught me formal etiquette, but it's actually not that at all. It's, it's my dad who just simply taught us that we could do anything we want as long as we put our mind to it and work hard. I love that. What is your father's first name? His name is Seth. Zach? Seth, S-E-T-H. Okay. Well, what an amazing man who has made an amazing impact on an amazing lady who's making an impact on Aww. the world now. Mr. Gromet, we thank you very much for, for inspiring <laughs> this beautiful lady to come and inspire the world. When you, over the past, I'm going to say three years, Mariah, we've had mm-hmm. obviously the, the COVID and the quarantine, the shutdowns and the pandemic. How did that mm-hmm. impact you and what were some of the greatest learnings you've had during that time? It definitely greatly impacted me. First, for starters, I, I started my company during the pandemic, so that was one aspect of it. And I'm I'm grateful for what the virtual world has allowed me to do. But I think that in terms of the greatest lesson or takeaway that I've had over the last three years is this mentality that I live by, which I call the wear the dress mentality. So it's all about not waiting for special occasions to do things to wear you know, your most beautiful dress or use your nice glassware, you know, not wasting time doing things that don't make you happy or waiting for permission to be who you really are. And I think we all kind of got thrown in this tornado of, you know, our world stopping and and really that that realization that we don't have, we're not guaranteed tomorrow and things can change at the drop of a hat. So I really just live by that mentality to to wear the dress and, and not wait for special occasions because you never know what's around the next quarter. I love that. Don't wait to wear the dress. Mm-hmm. I love that. So have did you notice, you. Mariah, that because we were quarantined for such a long period of time and our social, you know, ability to socialize with others was diminished greatly, did you see an impact mm-hmm. on etiquette and manners in our society because of that? 
Oh, absolutely. I think you can you can look at it as a, a muscle that wasn't being exercised, and so it, it lost its strength. Um, whether that be just learning how to or knowing how to interact with people in social situations, I always think about the first time I went back out after the quarantine was lifted, and I I went to I think it was the convenience store, the grocery store, just to buy a few things. And even even me, who was you know trained in these social situations and teaches people how to thrive in social situations, I found myself like skipping over my words and fumbling over my things when I was at the checkout counter and really realizing that, wow, we, we haven't exercised this muscle. And so um, I would like to give the people, people the benefit of the doubt and thinking that it's not intentional. It's just something that we were in a rut of, but unfortunately it, it is something that people have let go of, which is why I'm so passionate about speaking about it and, and bringing it back and reminding people that etiquette and manners are just about treating people with respect. It doesn't have to be anything formal or fancy. Well, I think this is a good time for, I'd like to ask you a series of questions that I've never asked any other guest on the Family <laughs> Lab podcast, because this is your specialty. So if you sure. don't mind, I've got a handful of questions that I've really, and I think I need to hear these. And I know so many members of the bamboo pack and the world out there need to hear these. So if you're okay, I'd like to start those. Absolutely. Let's do it. Thank you. Okay. So the first question, when you're in a situation, is it more, should you dress a little better? If I'm going to speak, let's say, or I'm going into work with a customer or client, should I dress a little above what I expect them to dress at their level or a little below? Which one is better? Which one hurts the most? So I want you to think about the concept of first impressions, right? And that it, it only takes people a few seconds to make their initial snap judgment of us. And so it's so important that we have our exterior um, represent everything we can offer on our interior, right? So allowing it to be kind of an advertisement of of who we are and what we can offer. And so my recommendation would be that you should dress up more and really as a way to show the people that you're around that you cared enough about them um, to have put effort into your appearance. I love that. That's I love that. I know I'm paraphrasing what you say because I was writing so quickly, but mm-hmm. our out exterior <laughs> somewhat advertises our interior. Yes, absolutely. It's, and, and it's not our fault as humans that we have to, to judge people based on their outside appearance. That's Our brains work that way. It's a, just a couple seconds we make that initial judgment. It's impossible for us to get to know somebody in those seven seconds. So How are you allowing your self-presentation to represent who you really are on the inside? That's so interesting. I was, when my first year in the professional world, back with IDS Financial Services, I was in a, in a company, uh, a large company, a Fortune 500 company, but we were in an office in Okemos, Michigan, and I had a division vice president. And he was, he and I were speaking in the hallway or something and having a good conversation. I thought it was very positive. As he went to walk away, he turned and looked at the bottom of my pants. He said, Never wear those pants again to, to this office <laughs> because they were frayed at the bottom. And I mean, I was making like 19000 a year. I was just out of college. I didn't have any money. So I put on and I, I'll never forget that lesson. And that was now almost 30 years ago. And I never mm-hmm. wore frayed pants again after that. So mm-hmm. I don't, <laughs> he probably could have told me in a little more professional, warmer manner. Yeah. But it, it stuck with me anyway. Yeah. So now we have Absolutely. a lot of young people coming into the workforce. You know, a lot of, of the generation coming in and they've graduated high school, they've graduated college or wherever they've come from. What is a good tip or some tips you can give them to impress a potential employer? That's a good, that's a great question. So I think that, you know, when it comes to the interview process or the application process, we all have access to resources nowadays. So on paper, it's kind of a level playing field at this point of of who's qualified and, you know, who's done what or who has what experience. And so I think the important thing is, of course, allowing yourself to stand out and marketing yourself, but how do you do that? So it's all about the show don't tell idea. So not telling your employer in an interview or your future employer in an interview that you're super organized or that you're a good team player, but rather showing them how your past experiences prove you to be organized or show that you're organized, just for example. Um, So it's kind of that show don't tell mentality to, to learn how to be a storyteller and to show them how your past experiences and credentials make you a great, you know, future asset or apply to the specific position that you're interviewing for. 
This one, so Dawson, this one's this from my son, Mariah, is a sophomore in college at Northern Michigan University. His name is Dawson. So Dawson, mm-hmm. I hope you hear this part because in two years, <laughs> you're going to be out there, uh, you know, looking for your first career. Another it's not question. Easy. It's not an easy time. <laughs> no, it's not. You know, and the other aspect I think of so often, Mariah, is, you know, with employers now can look back at social media uh, posts from you know, mm-hmm. pr- prospects and candidates coming into a company. So that's one thing I've always worked with him on is don't put anything on social media that you don't want your future employer to see. Because it's absolutely. What were some of the important things uh, or what are some of the important things that for parents to instill in their kids regarding manners? Like right now, you, you know, my my biolog- biological children are grown. One is married with her own son and husband. And then I have obviously Dawson, the sophomore in college. What? But I do have a grandson coming up and I've got this amazing young 12 year old in my life named Adeline. What are some things to instill in them about manners and etiquette? Mm-hmm. So I think it's all about, you know, teaching them what it really means to be a kind person through your words and your actions. So whether that be introducing introducing kind deeds, compliments, you know, proper greetings, how to say hello to someone and introduce yourself, unprompted gratitude, you know, being able to thank someone after a birthday party or if you they have a play date at somebody's home, table manners, of course. But I think ultimately it's all about leading by example. So they're they're watching what you're doing, and so making sure that you're you are paying attention to your manners, so that they have a good example to look up to. Oh, perfect. Now, how important, Mariah, is eye contact? I, I know it's important, but how as a mm. for, as an expert, how could you describe the importance of eye contact when two people are talking? It's so 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 important. Um, for starters, it's a sign of respect. You know, it shows the person that you're listening to them, that you care about what they have to say and that you're not putting your attention elsewhere. It's also a a way to connect you to to the person that you're talking to. You know, our our nonverbal behavior, our body language, it says so much about us, even more so than the words that we say. And so, you know, your eye contact is a big part of that. But it also is a sign of confidence, too. If you're able to look somebody in the eye, whether you're speaking or listening, um, it shows that you're sure of yourself and that you're confident in what you have to say and what you have to offer. It, I agree. I My mother always taught me the importance of a handshake and the importance of mm-hmm. eye contact. And I'm yeah. always so surprised by the adults in the in my world, whether professional or personally, who when you're speaking with them, they're looking down or they're looking to the side quite often. But primarily, I see them looking down. And for mm-hmm. me, it conveys a sign of weakness, a sign of yeah. lack of confidence. And then therefore, mm-hmm. with that, I, I walk away not fully trusting that person. There's a, there's a part mm-hmm. in my gut that says, I don't know if I can trust this human being, probably because, like Absolutely. you said, we didn't make a connection. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And it is intimidating for some people to make eye contact. And I completely respect that. And it doesn't work for for everybody. Um, and so it's, it's not a, a one size fits all thing. But it, it, overall, I would recommend um, leading with that so that you can show who you are with confidence, but also use it as a, a major sign of respect. That's a great, that's great. Another question is what's I'm going on in the business world, let's say whether I'm my age or I'm starting off out of college or high school or the military or, or trade school. How do I, what are some one or what a couple of good tips to use manners to get people to like and respect me more in business and generally in life? Just a couple of really mm-hmm. solid tips. Mm-hmm. So I like to think about the the quote that Maya Angelou says. She says, um, people will, for- and I'm sorry if I don't say this exactly correct, um, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. And so I think that really, really leading with treating others the way we want to be treated in both you know, your professional and social life, going out of your way to you know, genuinely ask questions, you know, use your proper greetings, to, to smile, to, to slow down so that you have the, the moment to actually make that special connection. Because ultimately, when you make people feel valued, that's what makes you memorable. Do you know that you're the second person in the past two weeks to quote that Maya Angelou quote on the podcast? Really? Yes. Really? And I can't remember who the, oh the previous one was. It was, I think it was two weeks ago, or maybe it was even last week. Somebody quoted that exact same quote. Wow. I lead with that in a lot of my presentations or like different courses because I think that it's it's a good proof or, or proof too about what etiquette really is about and it's about making people um, feel respected. 
we always had a saying growing up in the professional world, Mariah, that my our former mentor, my former mentor and, and vice president of the company would always say, people don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. And mm-hmm. that stuck with me. That was 28 years ago he taught me that, 27 years ago. Yeah. It has stuck with me since, since that one. day. And it's exactly what, what Maya was saying in this quote that you just that you just uh, shared. So anything else on that, just some other, anything else we can do, uh, maybe other than maybe eye contact or handshakes, that really can get a person to say, hey, I, I, I like that I connect with this person. I think working on your, your conversation skills, being able to talk to people, also having the mentality and in terms of a networking or professional standpoint of, you know, what can you offer rather than, you know, what can they do for you? It's what can you do for them too. Um, So that, that's a a great, you know, networking tip too, but also like we mentioned before, using, you know, your self-presentation as a way to represent yourself and show respect to others. Stay with us. We'll be right back. On the Futurist Freelance Podcast, we believe freelancing is the future of life, work, and everything. So whether you're brand new to working independently or you're a seasoned pro, we'd love you to listen. Every episode unpacks new ideas on how to make your future freelance. Whether you need to achieve business minimalism, survive a solopreneur crisis, or find the right digital nomad visa and community, we've got you covered. Alongside actionable insight on everything from finding gigs to outsourcing support services, even mastering TikTok with no dancing required. Subscribe to The Futurist Freelance on your favorite podcasting app via the link in your show notes. I'm sorry, I'm writing down. So I just thought of the name of the movie, Borat. Borat. That's what I thought you were talking yeah, about. I, and then I was like, oh, if I don't say, if it's wrong, I no, shouldn't say it. I, 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 on occasion, I've never seen it. We literally, it was raining on Saturday. So we literally were sitting here and I had my phone out and I was watching Borat, the couple of the scenes where he hired an etiquette specialist and Kelly had her phone and she was watching your Instagram videos <laughs> and we were going back and forth and I was like, you got to see this one. And it just like the difference in style, you know, is, but obviously that was a comedy, but the, the etiquette that specialist was a real person and playing their, a real role. But that's why I think your style is just perfect for today's society. Oh, I truly thank you. I have to watch it, I guess. <laughs> you have to watch the, there's a, all you have to do is uh, Google Borat etiquette. And I think mm-hmm. there's, I think he has hired two different, and there's a couple of scenes where he's at a dinner table and it's, it's incredibly funny. That's great. Okay. This question here, the next question I'm going to mm-hmm. ask is that I'm going to share a story and okay. I'm going to then ask you the question. And this is an embarrassing okay. story. So several Uh-oh. years, <laughs> probably 20 years ago, I was traveling primarily the Midwest and the East Coast. And my my new employee was my attorney. And we were traveling together, driving my car, going from place to place in these, in these financial firms that we had set appointments with and trying to get contracts for uh, me to do speaking engagements and then follow up with with teamed with the training and we were at dinner in columbus ohio and there was there were probably myself my attorney and probably five or six other people including the vice president of this company and we, <laughs> this is embarrassing to say but it stuck with me so mm-hmm. I, I i gotta figure out how i should have handled it and we were talking and and i was eating cottage cheese mariah and as I'm speaking, a big chunk of cottage cheese flew out of my mouth and landed in the vice president's water in his glass. Oh my and my attorney saw it and he looked at me and I looked at him. And before anything could even happen, before I could even register what to do, not that I would have said anything anyway, because I was very embarrassed. The gentleman mm-hmm. vice president took a drink out of his glass and obviously oh no. drank my discharged chot cottage cheese. So embarrassing oh no. moment. And I, Kelly and I were talking last night at dinner. Should I share this story? I said, I'm going to share this story because I make a lot of mistakes in this world. So the question from that is, when you create a faux pas, how do you recover? Mm-hmm. Mm, that's like, a great question. I mean, should I have said, in that case, should I have said, uh, excuse me, I just spit cottage cheese? Or should I have said, hey, your water, your glass looks dirty. Let's get you another one. I mean, but overall, mm-hmm. I mean, is there a specific way to recover from a faux pas? So I'll never forget when one of my mentors and and teachers said to me that nothing is a big deal until you make it a big deal. And so that's the, in my opinion, in my experience, it's the best way to kind of escape a faux pas. 
the other way is to to just remember that we're human and these things happen and etiquette is not about being perfect or perfectly polished in every situation. I like to use humor when these things happen. Um, but I think that number one, not making a huge deal that the, the, the cottage cheese went in the, the water. But I think that if you had just said, Oh, I'm so sorry, your water must have gotten dirty. Let me let me go get you a new one or let me call over our server or whatever whatever applied in that specific situation. But in terms of a, a general faux pas, the more attention that you give to it, the bigger deal it becomes. So if you can use humor or just try and push it under the rug or apologize if you need to in a certain situation, it's just all about, um, it, we're human. These things happen. We, we, we all make mistakes. Okay. I could, I, and I see that situation. I could have used humor because we actually did land that contract and I worked with this team mm -hmm. this company for several months and they were in great individuals. So I think the humor, it would have been taken very well. I could have just said, you know, e either way, it would have, we got it either way, but I, it's always stuck with me that I knew I should have handled that differently. And, and et etiquette in general too is, is about having a level of social awareness. So it's, it's about knowing how to act in certain situations. So as you as you mentioned, with this particular person, humor may have worked. In other situations, it's important to practice that social awareness. Maybe it wouldn't work with certain people. And in that case, you just, you know, go grab a new water and, and just handle it very secretly or very quietly. Um, so just knowing in, in what situations you, or in each situation, how to behave properly and knowing when humor would be appropriate or not. So me stare, standing with a blank look on my face and staring at the water glass probably wasn't the <laughs> advice you would have given me at that point. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not sure I would have handled it any differently. That's, that's shocking. <laughs> I, and I and I shared this with you, Mariah, in the pre-call before we got on air today that in mm -hmm. with Kelly and I, I've always referred to Kelly as a fancy cat. She's very coiffed. She's very has incredible etiquette and, and she's a fancy cat. So she termed uh, coined the phrase for me, barn cat, because I, <laughs> I live more of a, you know, and I and I, I, I do disparage myself quite often, but I really do have I think I have above average manners, but compared to her, I don't. And one quick story, and she's going to be embarrassed that I shared this, but I'm going to. My son Dawson and I, this was uh, last spring, 2021. We were in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where when I lived there. And my son was eight, 17 or 18 at the time. He was 18. And he and I and Kelly and Adeline, and she was 11 at the time, went to the Grand Rapids Zoo. And we were coming out of the zoo, walking through the parking lot to get back to the vehicle. And there was a, a bag of... Uh, of uh, beef jerky on the ground. And I normally pick up mm -hmm. trash and put it in the trash when I see it. I do that quite often, but I picked it up and it was an unse unopened sealed bag of beef jerky. So I tore it open without even thinking and Dawson and I both grabbed a piece and started <laughs> eating it. And though Kelly and Adeline looked at us like we had three heads each. And I <laughs> said, what? She goes, you did, did, did you just eat that off the ground? I said, well, it was sealed in a bag. It was a hot spring day. And, and and, if, and we, of course, we spit it out. For one, it tasted horribly. It was a flavor that I could have I'm handled. Sure. But it was one of those moments where I think she started thinking, oh, boy, what did I get myself into here? So <laughs> that's where the whole fancy cat barn cat story came from is from that from those that moments like that. So I've really cleaned my act up over the past 18 months dramatically. So I don't eat off the ground anymore. But I'm very happy to hear that, Brian. <laughs> I thought you would be. And she'll be very happy that you supported her, her position on that. Trust me. Of course. <laughs> so another question is, Mariah, what advice do you have for a work dinner or an evening event? Should I, should a person have a cocktail? Should they follow the, the, the host or the boss's lead in drinking alcohol? I think it depends on the individual situation. If you are a new associate or you have an interview dinner or an interview meal, I would recommend not drinking. If you are at a dinner, you know, with a team or with a client or a vendor and you've you know, been with the company for a long time and you're established there, I think it's absolutely appropriate um, to have a cocktail, just being mindful of it's still a work event. So making sure that you are a good, positive representation of yourself and the company that you're working for in terms of an evening event, um, like a networking event or a cocktail party or a, I don't know, any kind of, any kind of evening event. It's actually 
socially um, and professionally great for for you to hold a drink in a situation like that doesn't have to be alcoholic but just be a glass of water Um, it just makes you look a little bit more approachable people around you don't have to guess whether or not you've just arrived or you're getting ready to leave it kind of shows you're you're there to stay you're there to engage in conversation and network Um, through your body language it's just an inviting an inviting thing to do that is great advice to have something in your hand, whether or not it be a water or, you know, a punch or a pop or even a, a, a alcohol if it's if it's appropriate. Just I didn't I never thought of that before. Mm-hmm. That's that's great advice. It, oh, good. Yes, I, I I think that too. We're we are naturally awkward, right? With our with our body language, with our hands, with the way we stand, and so having something to hold. Uh, could just put you at, at ease. And I, I recommend it not being a phone. So a drink actually helps you to uh, just have something to hold. Yeah, because I guess if you don't have anything in your hand, you're probably naturally going to go to your phone and therefore your eyes are going to go down and you're going to start texting, scrolling exactly. Facebook or social media. Exactly. Another question is, and I'm not going to be using this one anytime soon, but how do you politely quit a job without burning a bridge? Mm-hmm. I think that, you know, of course, remaining professional should be the of the utmost importance. So displaying gratitude for what your current role did for you, keeping things, you know, positive, even if it's not ending on the best note. Mm-hmm. I think that you're leaving your legacy at this particular company or at this particular job. So making sure that you are leaving off on a good note. And you never know where you may reconnect with these colleagues again, even if you're leaving the industry completely. Um, that's still your your professional reputation. So no matter how you feel towards a boss or a company, you want to make sure that you're you're remaining professional. So this goes back to what you said earlier, which I've never even thought of this before. Etiquette is simply showing respect to others. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People have this misconception that it's, you know, of course, table matters are a major part of it. So it, of course, it's how you hold your fork and how you set the table. But it's it's way, way deeper than that, actually. And I just learned on Saturday that when you are eating, you shouldn't have your fork or spoon bridging or uh, going coming from the uh, table to your uh, your uh, plate. It should be across the plate when you're still eating. Is that true? Say that one more, Say that so one more time. A lot of times when I'm eating, I'll have my plate. And then if I take a mm-hmm. break and take a drink of something or grab a piece of bread, mm-hmm. I'll put my fork with the stem on the table and the, the fork and up on the on the plate but i was told you kind of oh, put it, i understand you kind of bridge you kind of put it over the plate but not in the food yeah so it should kind of be around the the rim of the plate so it would be in an in but there's there's different ways to rest your your cutlery depending on what region of the world that you're in but um in the united states it goes in an in inverse v so the top of your fork and knife would be towards the top of your of your plate kind of at that like 12 o'clock place and then the handles of the fork and knife would be going outward. But overall, you don't want to put your fork and knife back on the table at all after you've already picked them up, uh, whether that be the the handle of the fork and knife or the actual, you know, top of it. Okay. Well, you just made my dinner so much more challenging for me, Mariah. <laughs> <laughs> this last, this next question is incredibly important because I think mm-hmm. the vast majority of us fall into this category of forgetting people's names once we're introduced to them. Mm. Do you have a, a method we can use to when we do forget a person's name? Absolutely. So the first thing that you can do is if you have somebody else around to introduce them to, that's always something you can fall back on. Mm. But we don't always have that luxury. So again, like I mentioned before with the faux pas uh, discussion that we are human and these things happen to the best of us. So we just don't want to ever go up to someone and say, I forgot your name. So instead we would say, you know, it's been one of those days. Can you please remind me of your name? It's just a little bit more of a polite way to do it. Okay. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Will digital marketing fall apart when Google drops the cookie? Are ad agencies a thing of the past? Does CTV protect you from square eyes? Well, probably not. But there is so much changing in digital media today, it is kind of hard to keep up. Luckily for you, we have some inside information collected from industry leaders all over Europe, distilled by us with the loving care of a snake handler with hay fever, and bottled for your keen ears in the Digital Distillery Podcast. Should be right, mate. Just put a band-aid on it.
And I'm I'm going to speak directly to the bamboo pack here today. I, I I'm not going to summarize, and I didn't uh, I I didn't last week on an episode that will air next week with Frank Mossett because what I find is episodes like this, like with Mariah and with Frank, they're just one big lesson. And so to summarize mm-hmm. is a moot point. So I'm going to recommend to the bamboo pack if you're running or hiking or walking or driving or you're somewhere where you can't write down. Go back home, go back to your office, sit down and re-listen to this podcast and really write down some of these amazing things. I'll try to capture as many as I can in the text version of the of the podcast itself. But this is all amazing stuff. We all go out every day and we're competing. We're competing against others. We're competing against yesterday's mm-hmm. version of ourselves. This is just mm-hmm. a, a way to advance further. This is a secret weapon that we all can do for free, for free. It costs no money. To do these things that give us a, a, a you know, uh, a, an advancement. It gives us uh, an extra look. People see us from a different perspective. That's this is powerful stuff. I, I really wish I would have known this thirty years ago. I wouldn't have had frayed pants in my office. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I have another question that I'd like to see if you can help with this one. If you have an employee or employees who can consistently come in underdressed. In whatever that situation is, for I'm looking back at myself with my former uh, boss who shared with me, don't ever wear those pants again. I've turned around and used that same style when I was a manager at the same company when I told the gentleman to go home and burn his shirts because they, he can't come back on Monday morning. No, that's not the way to do that. And I know that. Is there a certain way you can politely, without hurting feelings, can share with an employee to, you know, tomorrow, come back, come up, mm-hmm. come a little more dressed up. We don't want the, mm-hmm. we don't want to see your toes. We don't want to see, you know, uh, you know, we, we want to have you not in, in a sweatshirt. So is there any way to do that? I think I would recommend keeping it as general as possible and almost putting the, the blame on, or maybe the blame is the wrong word, but putting the blame on the company's policy rather than the individual who may be breaking the policy. So just, you know, even if it's, it's you individually that has to say, you know, I just, I just want to remind you um, that here, here is a copy of our, you know, our policy, our dress code. You know, you've, you've been doing so great in your position. I just want to make sure that, that you're respecting the company guidelines so it's not hindering your growth here at the company. Oh, I like that. I like that last way you phrase that. So it's not hindering your growth here at the company. Mm-hmm. See, that's not the way I handled that when I was a young manager. <laughs> I literally, I literally, Mariah, did tell a man that he had to in a one-on-one that he had a body odor and that mm. he, and he was 30 years older than I was at the time. And, and he admitted that he did and he had to go to the doctor, but we worked so many hours. So I said, well, it's Friday, take the afternoon off and go get your prescription. And as he was walking mm-hmm. out, I said, and burn those shirts this weekend. Don't come on Monday with, with pit stained shirts. And oh, the no. funny thing is though, Mariah, that I moved on to another part of the company uh, six months later and I, this was my first experience as a manager. It was the first job I had as a, as a young manager. And they moved me to another office a few months later to take over uh, another t- uh, office in another city. And when he left the company about a year later, he emailed me and thanked me. He said, what you said to me that day really irritated me and angered me. But I realized over the course of the past year, you were the only one who was honest with me. And I knew you did that because mm-hmm. you cared. And now I wish mm-hmm. I would have done it differently. I just didn't have the skill set. And I'd certainly didn't have the confidence to be able to say something eloquently. But sometimes just saying something is better than saying nothing in situations like that because yeah, it, it was hindering his, his, his growth. Mm-hmm. And that's why our delivery, our delivery is so important mm-hmm. because you had good intentions with your message. Perhaps maybe there was a different way then that you would have handled it. Maybe not. But that's why the, the tone of you know how we say things and our word choice is is really, really essential. Sure. Is. And that's something I've had to learn over the years is, you know, I, I have a, I literally have a, on my desk behind me, my main desk, I have a mm-hmm. screen from a shower, you know, the little screen that you put in the shower, uh, the hole yeah. in the shower. And I bought, I bought a couple of them to put on my desk because it reminds me that between my brain and my mouth, I sometimes, I have to put a screen up. And I have to catch the garbage <laughs> that, that was going to come out and only let the good stuff flow through. And it is a constant reminder that, you know, I, my intentions are solid and they're pure. But sometimes mm-hmm. the way it comes out, there's a lot of imp- impurities in there. So it has to be caught in my mouth somewhere. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> we're all learning. We're all a work in progress. We certainly are. You're just f- f- far further advanced in these areas than most of us are. So. <laughs> Um, so going back to some of my, my, my primary questions, Mariah, can I ask you, in, in the course of your life, what is the difficult most – I want the, the Bamboo Pack to see someone like you who's really, really creating a great vibe in the world and really changing people's lives in such an incredible manner. Thank you. I wanted them to know that you're also human. On, Mariah, over the past – the course of your life, what is the most difficult thing you've gone through and how did you scale that well? How did you overcome that? Mm-hmm. So I think that obviously my childhood, as I mentioned before, my dad being sick um, was a, a very you know difficult thing that my entire family went through. Um, but I think it, in in my adulthood or, or more recently, this past year, I lost my grandmother and my neighbor of 20 years to COVID in a three week span. And so obviously that was a really hard time for my family, among other things that we were going through all while running my own business and learning how to be an entrepreneur. I had recently quit my very secure corporate job. There was not a lot of stability going on. And so, you know, having the growth that I had in my, um, in my business all while going through this really, really dark time in my life was a a big thing to juggle. And I think that, you know, social, because I have a big social media presence, people really only see the, the highlight reel of your life and, you know, the things that you choose to post. And so, you know, making sure that I, I show people that I'm, I'm human. And, and although I teach a art that is about being polished and being the best version of yourselves, that doesn't mean that that's my life every single day. And and, and you're very, you're very correct on that. I think we all present this image on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or that is is different than the reality, of course. And I, we were talking yesterday with the with my guest uh, Wendy Bounds. She was a survivor of nine eleven, and now mm-hmm. is an incredible author and uh, newscaster. And we talked about we see people from a two dimension so often, and when you get to that mm-hmm. third dimension and get to know them, you see the reality of it. And you know, it, I understand that social media is not necessarily for us to show our dirt, and we have to get some of the impurities out before we show that. And you know, looking at your Instagram, you know, in my opinion, you're the happiest person in the world. Oh, you're, you're, thank it, you. It's so, I, you know, and that obviously etiquette has not never been something I've really thought of in a, uh, consciously. Obviously, at mm-hmm. times I have, but to watch your videos that you put out, it's they're they're mesmerizing. They they draw you in. So we just watch over and over and keep going through them. And I love oh. now that you have titles on your on your Instagram. I don't know, maybe you always did, but you can go through and say, okay, this one's regarding this etiquette mm-hmm. issue in there. I can click hit on that. So can mm-hmm. you share right now, Mariah, your Instagram page? Uh, so the bamboo pack can, can listen. And then I'll, I'll include this as well in the text of the, of the podcast. Sure. So my Instagram is just at old soul etiquette, which is the name of my business. And I just want to touch on what you mentioned before about, you know, not letting all your airing out all your dirty laundry on social media and all the kind words that you you had about my videos. I think that for me, and I hope it comes across this way, it's that we all deal with our own stuff, right? Life is, life is not as glamorous as it should be. And we're, we all deal with hard days and hard seasons. And so my goal for my Instagram is not for me to come on and complain about my problems when the person, you know, the people watching have, have issues of their own. It's more so just to be a sunny spot where you can come and hopefully smile and work on yourself and it just be a, a positive space. And if you want to see Mariah lip sync to R-E-S-P-E-C-T, you can do that on there too. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. We really enjoyed that one on Saturday when we listened, we watched it. Right now, as you've, as you've obviously have lost, you've gone through the, 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 the thankfully the survival of your, of your father as he survived through cancer you've lost a neighbor and a grandmother over the past uh you know during COVID over a three-month time frame you left a left a very secure corporate job and started you know old soul etiquette which is obviously taking off at a rapid pace with the hundreds of thousands of followers you have on Instagram what's a win for you in life Mariah I think a win is just something that I'm able to learn from so it's a good experience it's a bad experience it's it's just something that, you know, feels 
right and feels in line with with who I am and what my mission is, even if it's something that feels like it wasn't a success, if I know that it's, you know, coming from a genuine place and it's something I can learn and grow from, that's a win for me. Oh, perfect. I knew I was going to like your style. <laughs> now, the next question is a fairly new question on the, on the podcast here, and that is... Mm-hmm. If you could summarize in a relatively short period of time, however long you want to take, what would you say in the in the learnings you've had throughout life in really being a, an incredible specialist in the world of etiquette, what would be a recipe for success for you that the Bamboo Pack mm. and myself can take away and say, okay, I can do this? Is there something you can succinctly summarize? That's a really, I like this question. So it's obviously a, a mix of hard work, obviously. It's it's about being willing to throw things at the wall and see what sticks. And more so being okay with when only one thing sticks when you've been throwing a bunch of things at the wall. You know, it's about being willing to do things despite how others may respond to it. And then ultimately, for me, my truest recipe for success is just being yourself. You can't fail at being you. You can fail at trying to force something that you are not. You can try, you can fail at, you know, being inauthentic, but you can't fail at being you. So that's for me, that's my true recipe for success. If if I do, that's how I define success too. If it's in line with who I am in line with my mission and I'm being myself and doing things the way Mariah would do it. That's my, to me, that's me. That's being successful. And I have to think that, Mariah, with a lot of your friends, you're probably, I mean, obviously you are an old soul. Can I ask this question? And you don't have to answer, but do you have friends come to you and even family members come to you for advice because you seem like this old sage that sits on a mountain with her <laughs> legs crossed up, crisscross applesauce, you know, and, <laughs> and you're ready to dispense advice? Do you have that quite often? Absolutely. I think growing up, I was always the the one to give advice, the one to keep everybody in line, maybe the, the fun police sometimes. <laughs> but um, yes, I, I pride myself in being that person. And although it, it sometimes is a, a responsibility, it's an honor for me. And it's it's what I like to think of, of a benefit of being an old soul. So if I can use that to help the people I love, that's I'll do that a million times. It, it it and I found in my profession, Mariah, as you probably do too. It's it, it's it's a bit of it can be challenging to be the mm-hmm. one that people come to for advice. But it's it, you're mm-hmm. right. It is such an honor, and I think that's that was that's a good lesson I can take away from what you just said. Is think of it more of as a as an honor versus you know always having to be on because people come to you for advice or they pick your brain on something. But it is an honor, and I think taking that and really yeah. kind of you know, pulling that in and saying, and, and, and wrapping that around you instead of sometimes I look at it and say, I just want to be here to have fun. I just want to relax, mm-hmm. but it is an mm-hmm. honor and it's a privilege. Uh, what's next for you? I see a book in the Oh place. my goodness. <laughs> hmm, maybe. I um, I have a lot in the works right now. Some some things are in the very, or too early in the stages to, to talk about it yet, but um, I have a lot of things coming up that the thing that I love about what I do is there's so many different avenues that I can take this with. So like I mentioned before, I'm throwing as many things at the wall and, and seeing what sticks. And um, I'm hoping now that I'm, I moved back to New York city, I'm hoping to host some in-person you know, courses here that people can, you know, purchase tickets to and come spend the day with me. So have some, I have some exciting things, things in the works. Well, I hope some of those exciting things have to do with you being on air more, whether that be TV <laughs> or some special. I mean, I, I, that's the stuff I see. And, and as I said, you know, and I'm, I'll say it again because I really want the Bamboo Pack to look at, you know, look on your website, which I'm going to include here, to look at, at go to Instagram and follow her at Old Soul Etiquette on Instagram. I know I've joined the the special club that you have, and I, I and I think that's mm-hmm. amazing. I Thank really you. want, well, I want them to, I want them to do this. I think there's an incredible a portion or part a, a fragment of our life that is so often overlooked. Like you said, it seems like it's an old school uh, uh, art, but really a lost art, but really it's, it's, it's an art. It might've been lost, but it needs to be found again. And it's incredibly mm-hmm. crucial. But I think for the bamboo pack, when you go look at Mariah's 
Old Soul Etiquette on an Instagram page, you're going to see it's such a refreshing, welcoming, vibrant, uh, exciting. It's just it, she talks about this thing that we all kind of cringe away from at times, and she just makes it feel really cool and fun. So please <laughs> get on you. there. And that's made for you have a large following, a large audience. And I, I see this being a global thing where the world knows your name and the world is, is becoming a better, a, li- a bit more quaffed because of you. Thank you. That means so much to me. Oh, it's true. It's true. Mariah, before we wrap up, is there any question I did not ask that you wish I would have? Or is there any final message you want to leave to the Bamboo Pack listeners? Hmm. I think if I could leave anything with your listeners, it would it would just be a sign of encouragement to really go after your dreams and to listen to your gut, to listen to that feeling when you feel pulled in a certain direction, because when you do have that feeling in your stomach and your soul, you know what I mean if you've had it before, um, but the worst thing you could do is not follow that. And, you know, sometimes it's a slow process. Sometimes it's just trying things, things that don't work, things that do work, but just if you feel pulled in a certain direction, um, that's not a random feeling. You should follow that. So if I could leave your your listeners with anything, it's just to, to really feel encouraged and empowered to go after the things that you're truly called to do. Well, you certainly have been doing that. So it, it, this is the Thank person you. for the bamboo pack. Mariah is not a person who's dispensing advice that she doesn't follow. She has followed that advice and left us a, a, a very solid corporate uh, position to start mm-hmm. old school etiquette. So she, she's trailblazing follow. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I love the, I'm just going to give a quick summary at the end here of a few of the things that I really, I mean, I liked so much of what you said. I liked all of what you said. I really liked this, what I said earlier, etiquette is nothing but showing respect to others. And it, there's mm-hmm. a lot of nuances to that, but that everything we do is just showing, it's a sign of respect. I didn't see it that way until the past 18 months of my life. And really that capsulated what I, Kelly has been telling me right there. And you said it in such a succinct way. It's just showing respect. I think that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Treating others with kindness, um, the CEO, treat the CEO the same as you treat the new employee or the janitor or the receptionist. We are all human mm-hmm. beings. And for the Bamboo Pack, if you remember several episodes ago, we had Bill Williams on the episode who was in uh, overseas 15,000 people in his organization. And he shared that he doesn't look at, he looks at himself the same as he looks at the receptionist. He said, they don't work for me. I work for them. And if you know Bill and his story, you'll know that it works for him. He has a great deal of respect in the business and finance world, as well as with the Ameriprise Financial throughout the organization. So looking at the other things that Mariah shared, I really, really liked the the part where you said, um, you know, if you'll for, forget somebody's name. Just we're human, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, can you please remind me of your name again? I think that's so incredibly powerful. And I really like that looking back in that cottage cheese incident for me several years ago. <laughs> and now I know how I should have handled that. You know, be human, you know, or and put a little humor yeah. into it if you have to. And, and, you know, just be authentic. I probably could have done them. I could have done a much better job than that. And I just think what you're what you've said is, you know, th- throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks and being OK if only one thing sticks. Because mm-hmm. it's th- that's trial and error. That's what entrepreneurs do. That's what dreamers and visionaries do. And that's how the world mm-hmm. changes. And be yourself. I love the quote. You can't fail at being you. Mm-hmm. Perfect. It's something I live by. I have it. I have it in my office. It just reminds me that when I feel, you know, myself fall into the comparison trap, because we all do, I remind myself, you can't fail. You can't fail at, I can't fail at being me. Well, I think that's going to be the title of today's episode. We're going to steal it. We'll give you, we'll give you full credit. Please do. Well, Mariah, thank you so much. This was everything thank I hoped you. it to be. And I know the audience is going to get a great deal out of this. And oh, just good. remember, Bamboo Pack, this is not additional stuff. This is stuff you can do in the course of your day in life that costs no money, mm-hmm. no extra time, but it gives you a leg up. It gives, makes people look at you with more respect. If you look at what we are, all human beings, everything we do in this world, we are looking to improve and receive more love, understanding, respect, and appreciation. If you don't think that these it, these qualities and these instructional things and these this wisdom that Mariah has shared with us will not help people to love you more, understand you more, respect you more, and appreciate you more, then you miss the boat. This is what this stuff is designed to do. It helps in all those primary things we're looking for as a human being. And it's simple little tweaks and turns 
for most for most of us. Some people have to have a whole complete overhaul. I get that, but for most <laughs> of us, just doing some of these things differently and from a different perspective, man, it can make an incredible difference in your life. I know I'm going to be taking so many of these ideas that she has shared back in uh, to my day to day work, professionally and personally. So, Mariah. Yeah. I just want to take this time to thank you for being such an amazing, amazing, inspiring Aww. guest on the Bamboo Lab podcast. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It was an honor. Oh, when when those things you're working on start taking off, I'm going <laughs> to ask you a favor to come back on the Bamboo Lab podcast. I would love to. <laughs> well, thank you. And we'll talk in a few minutes here um, after we get off air, Mariah. But in the meantime, Bamboo Pack, we thank you again for tuning into this amazing episode with Mariah Grumet, this amazing uh, just wisdom she has shared. In the meantime, everyone, get out there. We'll talk to you next week. In the meantime, get out there and sculpt your life. Get out there and sculpt away all those impurities every day that you have in your life. Build up those purities a little bit more. And every day, live closer and closer to your true peak identity. I appreciate every one of you listeners so very much. Until next time.